Today started off with a flat tire, which we still need to probably go get fixed. It's a bad valve stem. We're in a 55 and older community this morning, and we're out here to replace a 30 gallon medium hot water heater that's up in a little cubby hole, uh, and it looks a mess. So let me get a few things together and I'll take you over there and I'll show you. Ooh, there she is. Quest fittings. This one right here is leaking. That's a speed fit, polybutylene. That mess. All right, we gotta find where the power is and get this thing drained down. Everything about this heater spells wrong. The wiring up here, all this stuff, little half inch drain for the uh, pressure release valve, not to mention all these quest fittings and this one's leaking down here i gotta figure out how we're gonna get that out and the electrical panel is new but nothing is labeled on there so we're gonna have to take a chance and figure out which one it is put the multimeter up here so we don't get our pants shocked off us and this is kind of dangerous because i gotta take these wire nuts off here and test them with my tester without getting shocked my helper is inside and ready to throw some breakers until we find the one that matches Oh boy, this always makes me nervous. I don't want this thing flipping back, doing anything stupid on me. This is hot. This wire is hot. Whew. Tricky business. Hot wires. Hot, 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 hot. We gotta test them now. So we located the right breaker and we're going to take and mark it on the panel. Right there? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's mark this water heater. That way we know from here on out. Well, we are going to have to cut the water off to the house and upgrade all this stuff as much as we can. But before we do that, we want to get this started to drain so the water pressure still inside of the tank has enough force to blow out some of the sediment sitting in there seeing this thing's been in here since 2008. Okay. Oh, she's leaking a little bit out of there. It's okay. We gotta get this thing drained. Should be pushing some pressure out of that pipe. Then we'll kick out our little pump and we'll see if we can find this shut off valve. Looks like it's right here. Let's see if we can cut this off or not. I think it goes this direction. There we go. Nice and easy. Everything's brittle. You don't want to break nothing. There. All right. Let's open that up. Let's get uh, our pump plugged in. Man, this is going to be a slow drain. There's so much sediment up inside that tank. Even with the pump on, that's how much we're getting out of here. We can't just yank that heater out of either. There's pipes all running. It's up in a cubby hole. We got to get the thing drained before we move it. Everything about this water heater spells wrong, and this thing will not drain. I've tried the pump. I've tried every trick I have. It's a 30-gallon medium. Um, I'm going to end up having to cut all this stuff up out of here. If you can see or not, there's a copper line that's attached. I think that's going over to something else. So we got to maintain that and reinstall. We're going to have to drag this thing out hot with the water in it. The baby right there doesn't want to drain and I'd just yank it out of there if it wasn't on an elevated platform. 30 gallons times eight. Now think about it. A gallon of water is eight plus pounds plus the weight of the heater. 
So we're gonna have to bust this spout out. You can see I've got kind of a diversion happening out the door. But when we do that, I'm gonna have to stuff this up against the hole and run that shop back at the same time to try to minimize the amount of water that's all over the place. The only good thing we have going on, it's out here in the utility area. It's not inside the actual house. Um, Man, that thing was full of calcium deposits. Man, I do not like having to do this, but I don't have any other choice at this point. We did get some water on the floor. Uh, it's in a little shop area, so uh, a little bit of carpet. We got a shop back. It'll end up drying up, but you know what? It's the nature of the game. These manufactured homes are plumbed completely different than a regular house, and they put things in the tightest areas, and you got to do what you got to do. And I'm going to have to redo all the piping in here uh, and get rid of all this garbage. Being in manufactured homes, and we're going to have to probably take that polybutylene PEX, as you've seen me have to do it before, and use a shark bite to try to get on there. And we're going to go with CPVC. Being a side outlet, the cold is on the bottom, the hot is on the top. This could get ugly quick. guys use speed fits they're kind of a little bit like shark bites yeah well we ain't gonna be doing much better because like i said i don't have anything that can tie onto this old polybutylene pex so we're gonna have to redo everything without repiping the house we're just gonna have to hook on with some shark bites whether you like it or not you're gonna kill me in the comments i know it all right so the problems continue with this water heater install um, this new heater is 48 inches high and uh, it's barely going to make it up over that deal. Not to mention the fact I couldn't get a pan to fit properly in here. So we're going to have to just set the heater back in here. We're going to have a, definitely have a good overflow that's going to go down underneath there. But the pan, I can't sit it in there because this thing's in the way. And so is these other pipes. So we're just going to have to set it back the way it came out. This isn't going to be fun. It's lost the way. Alright, we're going to have to hold that in while I try to lift this end up. Oh, hold on. Ready? I can put it underneath it. Slide the back. See, that's going to be a problem. It's not going to go in there. All right, we've got that problem still. Well, unfortunately, one of our worries came true. Uh, that water heater will not fit up into that little cubby hole. So we're heading back to the shop and take a look and see if we have something that'll fit inside of that area. All right, let's try this again, shall we? Um, we tried everything we possibly could. Could not get a medium or a tall 30 gallon in here. One was too high and the other one was too wide. So we had to run up to the supply place and pick up a 30 gallon low boy. And it's gonna do just fine. Okay, let's 
see if we get this enough in here again. changes things because now our overflow can go down to the original hole and we've got room to install an expansion tank which I've already pre-charged to 53 pounds which is pressure coming in from the city of the house. Now to hook up those lines and tie that line in with a hot. I know you guys cringe and it breaks my poor little heart to have to use shark bites on this PEX. Right now I don't have a choice. You guys got a better idea i'd love to hear about it if i can get it on there oh come on oh, there she is one more oh, this sucks this sucks oh Get it on there. There it is. It's the hot and that's the cold. We've got to tie this little line in here to the hot side. Bring the cold up here, put a shut off valve, and connect it. The pressure release well. down through the floor and the original hole it was in that i was going to use a three quarter inch brass threaded t on the cold side for the expansion tank we have plenty of room i'm just going to butt end a cpvc t right here on the cold end and we'll put an adapter on there this way it will have no room to play and we can sneak past that electrical and all that stuff and point it to the front of the water heater so we can catch the main Ooh, just fitting in here. Oh, yeah. There we go. That's kind of how what the cold side came out. I didn't want to end up being in the way of the electrical anyway about it. So shut off valve over and into the expansion tank. You can see there's no room for error. Remember that little half inch copper pipe that was attached to the hot side before we put this out? I took the Quest fittings and all that stuff out of there and I sweated on a half inch uh, female adapter copper and then put a half inch brass to CPVC male adapter in there. And we're going to put a T in our hot line so we can pick that up as well. Well, that's where we're at so far. The cold's hooked up with a shutoff valve. Got the relief going down underneath the home. Our little extra hot pipe tied in. We just got to do the electrical and let the glue dry. All right, our glue's set up and everything's ready to go. It's time to turn the water back on to the house and fill that water heater full. <sighs> everything's looking good so far. I don't see any leaks air bleeding out from the hot side on this little mop sink. Hear that? Yeah. Very long with this heater, it's only 30 gallons to fill. And there we go. She's full. I don't see any leaks where we had to adapt that. Everything else looks good. Nothing going on down here at the shark bites. Everything looks good. We're gonna get the power turned on here and wrap this thing up. It's gonna do it for this one. Thank goodness that crap show is over. And wait a minute, before you guys kill me in the comments, remember, I don't make up the rules when it comes to what I show up to. I had the deck stacked against me from the get-go, all the way from having to redo those pipes having to hook on with shark bites to the old polybutylene PEX piping, not to mention trying to get a heater that would fit inside of there. 
and hook up the expansion tank and all the rest of those goodies. I don't like shark bites. I don't like CPVC. I don't make the rules like I said. We had to do what we had to do to make things happen. In the real world, things would have worked out perfectly fine if we would have had to attach on to old piping like that. But sometimes that's the nature of the game. Any questions, leave them down below. And don't forget to keep plumbing.